Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Now today we're going to be talking all about siblings and when they're room sharing and the effect that that can have on your little one's sleep. So stick around because I'm going to be revealing how you can make this work harmoniously and have siblings that do share a room and do sleep as well. Okay, so let's delve straight on in. The first thing I'm going to ask you is, ask yourself why. Why are your siblings going to room share? First of all, because it's lovely. It might just be that idea of, but it's nice. I want them to share a room. I would love for them to be together. And if we can make that work, brilliant. But you've got to ask yourself whether it's a nice kind of fantasy idea or whether it's necessary. In some cases, it's gonna be necessary. It's going to be a case of there are not enough bedrooms and the siblings have to share, and that's fine. But just question, if you're battling with trying to get two siblings to sleep soundly and share a room, just ask yourself, is it worth it right now? And would it be better to actually work on improving their individual sleep in separate rooms until they're sleeping a little bit better and then bring them together to room share? So I think it's really important just to ask yourself that question and just think that through first before we delve into actually conquering the sibling room sharing. Okay, so let's just note that siblings will become quite resili resilient to each other um, in terms of noises and sounds, things that might wake them up. So just bear that in mind that what might disturb them in the early days or initially when room sharing, they will get used to it. And once they're in a deep sleep, they're not going to be disturbed by much at all. It's only really during light sleep that things outside noises and things like that can actually wake us and rouse us from sleep. So they will become more used to each other. That does happen with time, but you have to almost go through the pain barrier to get there and go through those experiences of, yep, they will wake each other up a little bit initially until they get used to it. So again, ask yourself, is it worth that? Is it worth paying the price? Is it worth going through that to get to that outcome? Because ultimately, at some point, if you want them to room share, you're probably gonna to have to go through that. Is it costing them precious sleep? Are you pushing them to do this at the cost of having an exhausted child, exhausted family, and all being miserable? So always come back to that. But again, if it's essential, and your siblings, your, your children have to share a room, and there's no other way around it, then let's make that work. So what can you do? Well, one of the most important things you can do, and this doesn't really matter whether we're talking about a young baby or an older child, is to set up some really clear rules and boundaries. And when I say that with babies, of course they don't necessarily understand the rules or boundaries that you're implementing, but by setting the scene for those and by having a consistent response to things, they will soon learn. For example, when lights are out and it's dark, shh, there's no talking, there's no voice, it's just whispers. And you can teach them that from baby stage by doing it, by making sure that when the lights are out, nobody talks out loud. And it's just a whisper, everything's very nighttime mode and calm. And you can signal this sheer, like simply by having the lights off um, but also as they get older from around 20 months having a sleep wake clock in the room can really really help so that's a little clock that shows when it's daytime and when it's nighttime and when it's nighttime we all comply with nighttime mode and when it's daytime we show almost exaggerated animation in our body language and our voices and our expressions just to really differentiate the two and show a big clear significant difference between daytime and nighttime so that can really help. And then you're showing them that when it's nighttime, we sleep. We lie down, rest our head, close our eyes, we go to sleep. And you can show them that from a very early age. And also help them, help the siblings. So if you have an older one who is maybe a better sleeper and a younger one who's maybe up and down more, or a bit, bit more restless, ask the older one you know, to be on board with you and say, hey, 
I need your help with this. Can you help me? We're going to get him sleeping well and then he won't disturb you anymore. So let's show him what to do. Come on, let's lie down. Shh, let's go to sleep and kind of get them on board, role play a little bit with it um, so that it's not just a big battle parents versus children. You know, get them on board and show them the way. Praise them, reward the really good behavior around sleep. You know, the compliance of, oh yes, I'm going to lie down now and I'm going to settle to sleep and reward that however you can. Obviously age appropriately. You know, with an older one, you can have more conversations. With little ones and babies, it's going to be more through, you know, the soothing, the reassurance, putting them down, and, and they'll, they'll just get used to that if you keep doing it. With babies, if they're waking up in the night, follow my tips for how to respond consistently to night wakings, and that is going to help you um, at least reduce the night wakings to what's the best they can do for their age because we all wake in the night and little ones, babies do need some help sometimes, but we wanna get the very best from them. So we wanna optimize their sleep and have them resettling to sleep as best they can. And so really, yes, if you want your children to room share, if you want the siblings to settle nicely and go to sleep in the same room, it's all about setting up that lovely routine around bedtime and the rules around sleep time, and what that looks like, and then consistently responding to any disturbances uh, that happen between them in the night time. So stay tuned because in my next video, we're gonna be covering jealousy between siblings. And in an upcoming episode, we're actually gonna be talking about the whole bedtime routine and how to do that when you have more than one child in getting them both to bed swiftly and smoothly without any major battles. So stick around for that coming up soon and I'll see you then. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag TheSleepNanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.